What's up everybody, Byron here from ETA. Welcome back. So if you've been following the channel for a while, you know that I am all about the DIY. I love my skateboards, I love my cars, I love my fun little projects. I also love my guns. So this is a CZ P07. This has been a holy grail for me. I have wanted one of these for quite a while. Check it out, OD green, nine millimeter. Standard capacity is 15 rounds because I live in a free state. Mine does have one of the captured recoil springs. So fun fact, if you happen to have one of these pistols, make sure you snug that bad boy up and put some thread locker on it. There's a little bit of adjustment in there if you wanna adjust how it's running or I don't know why you would wanna adjust it. For me, fully compressed, runs perfectly fine, but you can take it apart to change out the recoil spring, for example, uh, should you choose to. And it is a steel guide rod. I cannot say uh, beyond a shadow of a doubt if all of the CZP07s came that way, but mine sure as heck did. In case you couldn't tell, I am like really excited. I have wanted one of these for a very long time. I, uh, I tried out the first generation of the CZ P07, which was the CZ P07 Duty, and I didn't really care for it. Uh, I do have a CZ P01, absolutely love the thing. It has been probably one of the best pistols I've ever owned in my life, absolutely hands down. So this happens to be the polymer version of it, and even with my big old paws, I find that the medium grip frame seems to suit me the best. This is going to be a EDC setup, but one of the things, and the PO1 to a certain extent, but the PO7 in particular, uh, people feel it has a really atrocious uh, trigger pull. I don't actually think it's all that bad personally, but that's me. I'm used to DASA guns. Um, when I was in the army, I probably put somewhere around 500,000 through a M9 Beretta, uh, just over the course of you know instructing people and teaching them, and handling it and having fun. So I like the concept of a decocker on my pistol. <clears throat> I have no problem carrying cocked and locked. Uh, my EDC happens to be an aluminum frame 1911. Not necessarily because I love the guns, I do, but I just happen to shoot that better than anything else except this. It does have a rather heavy trigger pull. What's involved with getting a better trigger pull? I'm glad you asked. So there's a couple of different ways to get there. I went the Macarbo route. Um, this is like 20 something bucks. I had, um, they actually got it out to me the day after uh, her hurricane sent it to me. I had them two days. That's pretty incredible. Yeah, that's all I got to say. So Macarbo, hope you're watching. First thing that we're gonna have to do Obviously, you're going to have to disassemble the pistol. If you don't have the technical know-how to get to this point, well, I hope that you keep watching. Maybe I can give you uh, a little bit of confidence or maybe a little inspiration. Um, I'm a big believer in doing things yourself if you can do it yourself. So the second option, if you're lazy or you just don't want to deal with it or whatever, is you can send it to a place called uh, Cajun Gunworks. They're over in Louisiana. Uh, M Carbo also accepts uh, PO7 uh, CZ trigger jobs as well. Personally, I think that you should do it, especially if you're going to be um, using this pistol uh, as an everyday carry. Um, I've got a pretty nice holster being constructed by Eric up at uh, HPE, so I'm really looking forward to that. Shout out, Eric. I'm going to give you a review once your uh, holster gets in. You're going to need snap caps if you own this uh, pistol, and I'm going to show you why. This is one of the biggest downsides of the design, and I don't really consider it to be a downside, just for the record. Um, if you educate yourself and you are not the village idiot, read the owner's manual, this little guy right here 
More focus. Yeah, there we go. Good camera. I love using this camera. This little pin right here sits in a groove, which you guys are going to see later, but it sits in a groove inside the firing pin. And so that's what retains the compressed firing pin spring uh, into the slide. So the hammer launches it forward. And if there's nothing to take the shock here, that's why you use a snap cap. Let's see if I can get it to lock in here real quick. So, there we go. Check that out in that call. So, when the firing pin is constantly hitting an empty chamber and there's nothing to take the shock, uh, you run the potential to do two things. Number one, um, you have the, the potential to break the firing pin and the firing pin retaining pin, which is a wear item. So, Macarbo includes a upgraded, significantly stronger than factory firing pin retaining pin in their kit. Alrighty, so now we're all reset with my cool handy dandy tripod. You're going to need a bench block of some variety. Obviously, the firearm. You're going to need a brass face, plastic faced small hammer because these you don't really want to whale on it. And you're going to need a punch set. Now, fun fact you can get. Uh, th this was a couple of bucks on M Carbo. This is a couple of bucks on M Carbo. This is a couple of bucks on M Carbo. Um, you don't. The the other thing I, I just want to kind of flex real quick on my my uh, CZ nerdiness. I picked up this beautiful tech mat, and as you can see, it's got a fully exploded parts diagram for the CZ P07. It's one of the reasons I liked it. Uh, I did mention that this is a holy grail gun. One of the other reasons that I, uh, I happened to pick this particular mat is, uh, well, when I clean my guns in the house, my wife gets angry. Uh, reason number two, go back and see reason number one, and reason number three, also go back and see reason number one. I love my wife. She's an amazing woman. Absolutely wonderful, wonderful woman. So we're just going to frame that back up. All right, so you're going to need a lubricant of some variety because you're going to be using 1,000 grit sandpaper with this operation, OK? So we are going to go ahead, and I think I'm going to do this a little bit smart, hopefully. And we are going to line up. There, there's two uh, springs in here that you have to fiddle with and you're going to have to remove. Uh, and this is not the easiest pistol in the world to, uh, to take down. I'm just going to tell you that right now. Um, I've, I've done this quite a bit. Uh, I'm not just a, uh, a gunsmith. I, I also, you know, play one on TV and I slept at a Holiday Inn Express or whatever else you want to say. Um, I, I like to just think that I'm not a total idiot, just maybe, maybe 50%. So I've got some uh, synthetic grease PTFE. We're going to be using this as a lubricant when we uh, get to the polishing portion. We're going to go ahead and very gently pop this out. So. As I understand it, we're going to need this, which is the firing pin spring. And we're going to need this, which is the firing pin block spring. It also comes with the trigger return spring. We'll figure it out when we get their spring. We'll also figure it out when we get their spring. Your upgraded roll pin that has, is uh, rated at 18,000 pounds of force for sheer strength, so it's good. Now, I only want to mess with those springs right now. 
Part two of the video is where I'm gonna go and rip apart all of this lovely intricacy here uh, and take that out and we're really gonna to get to polishing on that. So why am I doing this? Um, the goal is to clean up and improve the trigger but not change drastically the characteristics of it because this is still a defensive pistol. That so we're gonna go ahead and put up the new parts for right now because we don't need them and we don't wanna lose them. And they are pretty tiny springs. All right. So when you're driving this pin out, you, you have to be cognizant of the uh, firing pin spring. There are two springs that we're gonna be dealing with today. This is your firing pin block. So this pops up right when it comes back to here. And the whole purpose of that, this is actually what does that. The whole purpose of that is so that if the gun is not completely in battery, there's a couple thousand PSI worth of pressure in here, right? So if it's open like that, all explosions are going to take the path of least resistance and thus it will blow out the side up the top or possibly even back towards the shooter. None of these are situations that you want to have happen. So you have a disconnector. As this is a mass produced firearm, they don't really take the time to remove the machine marks and do the finer polishing. So I want you to think of this as less of a trigger pull reduction and more of a simple, you're cleaning up what's already there. What can I say? I'm an optimist at heart. We're gonna pop that out. We're gonna remove the firing pin and we're gonna get a look at how it's all situated and you'll see that this really isn't complicated. So how the hell do you use a bench block? Well. You're going to line it up pretty much like so. You want the pin, you're going to be driving the pin out, and you want the pin to be captured while you're driving it out. And once again, I just want to remind you, you have to keep this compressed because it's also under pressure. That's These springs, if you don't um, take proper care and, and use, you know, just pay attention the, these springs do have the potential to end up everywhere. As I'm in a carpeted room, I really don't want to try to um, find it. All right, so that's all the cool safety stuff. Let's get after it. You're going to find the correct size punch. And uh, fun fact, you can use the roll pin as a guide to know which, which one it is. Uh, M Carbo sells the three-piece kit comes with all three sizes that you're gonna to need to do this work because you don't wanna ding it while you're driving it out. So in this case, this would be a eighth inch punch. So we're gonna go ahead and line that up and we're gonna start popping it out. Check our progress, is it moving? Now you can take a punch and run it in the back, and that'll take some of that pressure off, but it's really, really hard to kind of, you know, get all three going at once. So what I'm hoping is that as I drive it, the punch will capture the firing pin. I apologize about the audio in advance. So as you can see, we are making some progress. And as we're driving it out, we're gonna feel when the, uh, you're gonna feel it when this takes the place of that roll pin uh, for retaining the firing pin. And that's about the point that you really have to start being cautious with what you're doing. My butthole's puckering because we're just about there, boys and girls. And I'm hoping that I do not launch this goddamn spring out. Definitely under some fucking tension. We are making progress. You want to, you know, practice proper FOD control and then I don't confuse the old parts with the new parts. We'll be back. 
Continuing on, I'm just gonna use that uh, to hold the old parts, help me keep them contained. All right, and also just so you guys do know, um, there are two positions that are actually retaining this firing pin. So even if you do drive the pin all the way out, you're not gonna launch the firing pin yet. However, once you press up on this plunger, that motherfucker's gonna shoot into orbit if, you, if you're not careful. So you can tell that there's some pressure on this punch. Hope y'all can see that, which is awesome because the PO1 also happens to use the same size uh, roll pin, and I happen to own a CZ PO1 as well. But what what you're gonna do is you're gonna use the back of a punch. <clears throat> you need to compress, so you're just gonna compress it a little bit, so you can take that tension off it, so that you can release the secondary lock here. So once I pull this punch out, um, I need a little wiggle room, so we're gonna use the larger hole again, and. Uh, <clears throat> being the punch here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm compressing the firing pin spring with the punch. And just, so now, this is what I was talking about. Now we are at the second point. This is the point of no return, ladies and gentlemen. You have to maintain control of two different sprung uh, parts. There's a spring for the uh, firing pin block and there is a spring on the firing pin. So you just wanna gently keep hold of it. And if you notice, I'm still depressing the firing pin plunger Second thing I need you to note is the angle with which the firing pin comes out. See those cool little grooves right there? Those cool little grooves point up top of the slide. You'll need to know that later. <clears throat> now you just slowly release the compression <clears throat> and that's all we're gonna be doing right now. So there's the old spring and there's the old firing pin spring. Make sure everything is good and clear. The next most critical thing that Anybody watching at home who's going to attempt this, if you've never done this type of work in your life, <clears throat> you need to understand this area right here is what we're gonna be polishing, okay? Don't remove material. That's why we're using the lube and thousand grit sandpaper and a soft surface. With a soft surface and very little pressure, you're just trying to, to smooth out the surface. It's a little hard to tell. This one's actually not that bad. Um, as I'm in here and, and looking at it, but I just want to show you um, You can still see there's there's some machine marks and stuff that are in there So that's all you're trying to do is is just kind of polish that and just so you can kind of understand when it's all assembled Right, it's riding on the rails here and over here so when you have that surface polished a rough surface will catch and create a little bit of additional friction that simply doesn't need to be there whereas a well-polished service will not. So once you get it up nice and smooth, right, I'm just gonna remove the tooling marks and I'm gonna polish just a slight bit around the outside. We're gonna grab our handy dandy flex shaft machine and a little bit of uh, flitz, which is a standard machine polish. Also comes in the kit here. And we're just gonna bring it up to a nice mirror finish, okay? So I, I will say it's not that rough it's not that bad on my particular gun. However, I have seen several others that are um, quite a bit worse. So when you send your, your pistol off to M Carbo or Cajun Gunworks, or actually, to be quite frank, any gunsmith, this is all they're really doing. So I've got a little bit of grease on here. I've got a little bit of grease on here. And we're just gonna very lightly, if you listen carefully, you can hear where it's rough and dragging. So you're not really putting downward pressure on the sandpaper. You're just working it a little bit at a time. That's one of the things. Having a soft surface while you're polishing it allows you to, allows it to, you know, you can push down a little bit and um, you won't remove too much material. Anytime you're polishing, you are obviously removing a tiny microscopic little bit of material. But I mean, come on, dude, this is not, you know, I'm not sure you guys can hear that. I bet you can now. So it is definitely polishing up nice, cleaning up nice. And again, remember, you're not using a lot of pressure, okay? You're just trying to remove any machine marks from it. You can see it's getting better. So now we're all set up with the flexible shaft machine. Uh, you don't have to have, you know, a flex shaft, but I mean, it, it really does help. It makes a big difference. It makes it a lot easier to use. Um, I will put a link down to this machine uh, in the description of this video because this honestly is a pretty badass little 
machine. I think it's a bargain personally at like 30 bucks. So it's, I don't know, $70 cheaper than a Dremel tool. So yeah, do with that information what you will. Wear eye protection. You're gonna make a little bit of a mess, okay? You wanna get the bit nice and coated in the flits. Move it around there with your finger. Remember, this is not about pressure and this is not about speed. This is just about taking your time and doing your thing. So the two spots that we're gonna polish are gonna be here, and I'm just gonna bling this a little bit on the firing pin, not a whole lot, but just a little bit. As you can see, there's still a lot of life left in that thousand grit. And I'm just gonna very, very ever so gently go around here and here inside the slide there just to make sure that it's completely snag free. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and some of that extra polish that I know as soon as I turn this thing on is gonna fling everywhere. I'm just gonna go ahead and put onto the part itself. Remember, you're gonna have to degrease the thing before you put it back in anyway, if you will. Uh, this is gonna get a little loud. I'm gonna do the best I can. Just get a nice coating of, uh, of the flits on there. It's a fairly safe product. Absorbed, now we're ready to go. Don't forget your eye protection. We just wanna make that bright metal. Again, we don't want to change any geometry. We just wanna nice and smooth. Uh, just a little bit of pressure, that's all. Let the machine do the work. Have an empty mind, as the Buddhists say, and just lose yourself in the work because honestly, it's fun. And that is really cleaning up nice and pretty. Ooh, she pretty, she gonna be pretty. There's still just a tiny little, tiny, tiny, tiny little lip right there. This side is much better now. So all you do is you slide your fingernail across it, okay? And if, it, if your fingernail stops, that's where you need to focus. This is part of the drop safety of the gun. So it is kind of a, a critical component. That is awesome. That is like butter, baby. Butter, 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 butter. And that is all she wrote. Nice, smooth, clean engagement. <laughs> I wish you guys could see my face right now because I'm, I'm like, I've, I've got a shit eating grin. Grin. Ear to ear right now. Yep, this is beautimous. This is, look at that, look at that, bling. She's nice and slick. So now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, grab some isopropyl alcohol. We are going to wipe down those surfaces. Nope, that's pretty good actually. I don't wanna fudge with that too much. Nope, I don't, I don't wanna fudge with that at all. I wanna keep that nice and sharp. So, little Q-tips. I'm just gonna do a little detail cleaning real quick. 99% isopropyl alcohol. And we're just gonna go over it to make sure that there's no polish left. Microfiber is a great thing to use for this also. She's all cleaned up. Let me show you the final results. Look at that. I, I hope the camera picks up on just how awesome this feels right now because this really feels good. Very, very happy about that. Uh, for those of you that do happen to do this indoors, as you can tell by the white splatter everywhere, it does go everywhere. That's why you wear eye protection when you do this. So now we have the M Carbo parts, the new ones. We're just gonna go ahead and pop, the, pop it out. Table, again, uh, link in the description below. This thing honestly kicks ass. I've used a lot of different rotary tools over the years. Um, I am quite satisfied with this. So before you get too far, make sure you wipe up all your little bits of polish everywhere. I'm proud of that. I'm proud of that. That is damn near a mirror finish uh, on there. We're just gonna put a little dot of grease right here. And what this is gonna do, number one, provide a little lubrication, which is not a bad thing. And number two, it's gonna help stick it so it doesn't get lost. I'll be doing the install on these tomorrow. So stay tuned for part two. And just to make sure everything is absolutely clean on the inside, I'm gonna go ahead and get another Q-tip here with the isopropyl alcohol. And just to make sure we don't have any weird debris or burrs, I'm gonna go ahead and run this down in there. As you can see, it's a little funky. 
I mean, it happens. And we're just going to remove any additional crud that could get in my way. Might as well clean the front of the breech face while I'm at it. Give everything that final wipe down. Because this bad boy's got to go in. And this goes in just like so. That spot that you spent all that time polishing right here. Yep. That's where you want it. So you're just going to lightly hold that up while inserting the old pin of the firing. I'm going to press in with this just to make it a little easier for you guys to see. And as you can tell, not quite right yet, but as soon as you get it to the right spot, it should pop down. There it goes. So now we have a captured firing pin. As you can tell, spring is good. Okay, hope you guys can catch that on the camera. Let me zoom in a little bit, make this a little easier. So, you see how nice and smooth that is now? And then this part, nice and smooth. So once you get it in, the spring will pop back out and will allow you to work the firing pin. Now for what is quite possibly the most complicated part, you can also verify it just by looking through this hole here. I don't know if it'll focus on that. There you go. So you should be able to see light and you'll just see the edge of the ears on the firing pin. That's how you know it's in the correct orientation. Now you're gonna take this, which is your new roll pin, and you're going to drive it home. I'm going to put a little bit of lube on it because it doesn't take a whole lot. But that little extra bit right there will help you greatly. So I'm gonna, again, grab my 1 8 inch punch. This is what I'm gonna be driving the roll pin in with. And this one I'm gonna use on the other side as a slave pin. So we are just gonna push that in. Now you can see we have captured the firing pin. And this is not the easiest to do, but just to get it started, you're gonna use the plastic side, not the brass side. You don't wanna dingus up your, your new fucking roll pin. I'm gonna go ahead and start it. The slit goes to the, to the top of the slide, so it should be facing you. And, and, you know, just be prepared to reset this every so often. As you can see, the uh, firing pin block is working. I am going to keep my finger over the firing pin while I drive this in. And I just want to check and see if it, and it is. Holy fuck me. Look at that. Well, so this pin is actually tapered, which means the tapered end goes in first. As the slave pin, to go ahead and hold that. Now I can hold it flush down on my bench block. Starting to wonder if perhaps this pin goes in the other way. We have our slave pin. And that's just gonna help us guide it. Now obviously, as you can tell, I'm gonna have to pop this out. But once it gets started and it's going in, it'll kinda sorta align itself. Okay, so a little bit of cussing, screaming, and swearing later. Uh, we've got it started. I've got it laid up on the bench block. As you can see, I'm using this uh, Dremel bit as a slave, just to kind of make it a little bit easier. Uh, the grease helps, and you're just gonna drive that sucker home. Make sure that the slit stays up. I'm gonna back the slave out a little more now, and just keep driving it. As you're, as you're popping this in, it's actually compressing that roll pin, so. Eighteen thousand psi. Um, it's a good thing. It's what you want. Okay. And okay. So now we're we're at that point. We're at that moment where you want to fully compress the firing pin all the way. Once it starts, it'll keep it. Shit. So I'm right on that edge, okay? So you know, I am right on that edge. You are putting in a lighter fire and pin block spring, by the way. So we're gonna go ahead, run that slave pin back in, compress 
in. So we're going to let this do the work and help us keep it compressed, okay? So should need a, just a few more wax and, and we're golden. There we go. And we're just going to take that. Oh yeah, she's going now. We're still kind of on the cusp of losing the uh, firing pin. As you can see, we're, we're, we're close. It, it's just about there. And eventually I'm going to have to pull that slave pin out because I can't beat it all the way in. But I'm going to go ahead and do my cool little punch trick just to compress the uh, firing pin in a little bit more. There we go. So now the firing pin is fully compressed. Clean that up a little bit. Check our depth over here. So now we're done futzing with the firing pin. We can just focus on driving that sucker home. You're going to take the eighth inch punch because now we don't want to dingus up our slide, right? Oh yeah, she's driving like butter now. That's what we want. Just make sure you don't dingus your slide. And if you do, well, I did try to warn you. I'm using the eighth inch to drive it down lush, and then I'm going to use the next size down punch to do the rest of the work. The slit is still facing up in the correct orientation. Everything is going right. So now all we're going to do is just drive this sucker in. And what you're trying to do is get it to where it's equal on both sides. Okay. Ooh, doggy. We're getting there. So hopefully it'll focus. There you go. Just kind of see what I see. So you're just trying to sink that pin to where it's equal on both sides. Gentle taps. I'm not uh, not beating the shit out of it. And again, we're going to check. So put your eighth inch punch in. Slide your fingernail down to where it makes contact with the serration. You can check your depth. And do the same on the other side. Cool. I'm going to give this one last little love tap. We're there, gentlemen, ladies, whatevers. There we go. Again, check your depth. So I'm going to go on this side, slide my fingernail down to where it touches the serration. Maintain that position when you pull the punch out. And I'm going to do the same here. And yeah, we're there. So that's it. That's all there is to doing the slide. Now we're going to check function. Firing pin should not stick out of the breech face while I compress it with the hammer. Or with the punch, I should say. So I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm hoping that it'll focus. But I'm going to poke the back of the firing pin and the firing pin does not protrude. That is a good sign. Now we're going to push in the firing pin block and push the firing pin forward and we should get full extension on the firing pin. And as you can see, we do. So hopefully that came out on the video. One last quick wipe down with the, uh, with the clean side of the microfiber, dirt, gunk, junk, or debris. Run it home. Check for function. Decock. Here we go. Loader snap cap. Holy shit. So, just that little bit of work that I did on the firing pin stop, this is nice and clean now. It was a little gritty, yeah, I can hear the snap cap snapping, so the firing pin is doing its job. The return spring is good. But even just this little 
I haven't even got into polishing the trigger yet. Good Lord, I'm gonna love this. So again, check the decocker, right? No hammer follow, which is good. Of course, we haven't polished any of those surfaces yet. But just replacing the firing pin block spring and the firing pin spring itself Yeah, that's not a placebo. God, I wish I had a trigger pull gauge. So take a look at the action and see how smooth that is. It, it's helped. It's helped a little bit, just a teeny, teeny, eensy, weensy little bit, but it helped. So I'm happy. I like that. Go ahead. Cool. So just that little bit has actually made a marked improvement. Uh, tomorrow, I'm really, I am really excited to see how this goes tomorrow. I'm Byron. Thank you for sticking in. This is part one. We'll get to part two tomorrow, and then we'll show you the final results. See you in the next one. Stay safe. And just have a nice day, dude.